Welcome to the Monday Thursday Worship here at St. John's Lutheran Church in Erie, Pennsylvania. Every Sunday in worship, the church celebrates the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. On several key days at the center of the church year, however, worship takes a particular shape. These central days have come to be known as the Three Days, recalling Jesus' own words to his disciples that he would be handed over to death and that, after three days, he would rise again. The three days encompass the time from Monday Thursday evening through the evening of Easter Day. In particular, the services of Monday Thursday, Good Friday, and the Vigil of Easter unfold in a single movement. As the church each year makes the passage with Christ through death into life. Some items you might want. A candle. You might wish to light a candle at the start of this worship, reminding yourself that Jesus' light still shines bright tonight, but tomorrow night it will be snuffed out. You're also going to want to get bread and wine. Communion, because tonight we celebrate the Last Supper. Because the Last Supper, celebrated tonight, Jesus' death on the cross, remembered tomorrow, and the empty tomb celebrated on Easter Sunday are one inseparable truth and are all part of God's free gift of salvation for us through the redemption of us. You're also probably going to want to get your Bible. You are invited to follow tonight's story as found in Mark chapter 14 of the Gospel. Now, let us journey with Jesus through his last night. We gather in remembrance this Monday, Thursday, to worship in the name of God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. It was two days before the Passover of the Festival of Unleavened Bread. The chief priests and the scribes were looking for a way to arrest Jesus by stealth and kill him. But they said, not during the festival or there may be a riot among the people. While he was at Bethany in the house of Simon the leper, as he sat at the table, a woman came with an alabaster jar of very costly ointment of nard, and she broke open the jar and poured the ointment on his head. But some there said to one another in anger, Why was this ointment wasted in this way? The, this ointment could have been sold for more than 300 denarii, and that money given to the poor. And they scolded her. But Jesus said, <laughs> let her alone. Why do you trouble her? She has performed a good service for me. For you will always have the poor with you, and you can show kindness to them whenever you wish. But you will not always have me. She has done what she could, and she has anointed my body beforehand for its burial. Truly I tell you, wherever the good news is proclaimed in the whole world, what she has done will be told in remembrance of her. Then Judas Iscariot, who was one of the twelve, went to the chief priests in order to betray him to them. When they heard it, they were greatly pleased and promised to give him money. So he began to look for an opportunity to betray him. On the first day of unleavened bread, when the Passover lamb was sacrificed, his disciples said to him, Where do you want us to go and make preparations for you to eat the Passover? So Jesus sent two of his disciples, saying to them, Go into the city, and a man carrying a jar of water will meet you. Follow him, and wherever he enters, say to the owner of the house, The teacher asks, Where is my guest room where I may eat the Passover with my disciples? He will show you to a large room upstairs, furnished and ready. Make preparations for us there. So the disciples set out and went to the city, and found everything as he had told them. And they prepared the Passover meal. This first part of our reading tonight has a lot of stuff in here that, well, often slips by us. We often miss it. Think about who Jesus was as a rabbi and what he did. It was two days before the Passover of the unleavened bread. So two days before Passover. Something the, high, the highest of holy days for Jews. 
the chief priests and scribes were looking for a way to kill Jesus. This was Tuesday. They were looking for Jesus on Tuesday of Holy Week. Now, Jesus happened to be in Bethany, a little suburb of Jerusalem. And he was at the house of Simon the leper. Let that sink in for a moment. Simon the leper. This rabbi, this guy who has to maintain cleanliness and stay away from lepers in order to do his job, said that this person is worth my time, my effort, my very being, my care. And he is at the house of this person with leprosy. While he was there, this woman, we don't know who she is in this gospel, but she comes and opens this jar of ointment. Now what you need to understand, this wasn't just some perfume. This jar that she had was an investment. It had a year's wages worth of ointment in there. That was its value. This was her trust fund. This was her IRA, and she gave it to Jesus. That is how important she thought he was. Disciples got all bent and Oh, that money could have been used to feed the poor like you've been teaching us, Jesus. He goes, hey, you can show the poor kindness anytime you want. I'm only here for a little while longer. That's the first part of the story. Now, you need to understand that Jesus knew these, these uh, scribes and Pharisees were trying to kill him. It was not unknown to him, and it wasn't some sort of supernatural thing. There are lots of people who follow Jesus, and he would hear things. They would say, hey, Jesus, I was cleaning the temple and I heard these guys talking about they want to kill you. Jesus knew there was a price on his head. Jesus knew that someone was going to betray him. He heard about these things and he knew they were looking for a way to find Jesus. So Jesus was on the down low on a lot of stuff here. He went and told his disciples, they said, hey, we're going to do Passover, right? He goes, yeah. Well, where do you want us to do it? He goes, well, go into the city. And you're going to find a man carrying a jar of water. This isn't Jesus going, oh, there's a man carrying a jar of water. This was something he probably set up. Because men didn't carry jars of water. That was woman's work. So it would be very obvious to see this person, but follow the man with a jar of water. He's waiting for you. He's going to watch you walk in and just follow him. Go to the house that I've already done the work. Go there and set up the Passover at the house he takes you to. And sure enough, they went to the city and they found this place and they went to what we now know as the upper room. And they prepared the Passover meal. When it was evening, he came with the twelve. And when they had taken their places and they were eating, Jesus said, Truly I tell you, one of you will betray me, one who is eating with me. They began to be distressed and say to him one after another, Surely not I. He said to them, It is one of the twelve who is here dipping bread with me. For the Son of Man goes as it is written of him. But woe to that one by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. It would have been better for that one would he not have been born. If you are familiar with uh, some of the games that are played, video games today, one of the games is called Among Us. This is the very first game of Among Us recorded, where someone amongst this group is the killer. Jesus doesn't know who it is, but he's probably heard from someone who said, hey, Jesus, I, I heard these scribes talking about um, one of your disciples, they're, they're going to betray you. What? Yeah. I'm given 30 pieces of silver to do it. Well, which one? I don't know. They didn't say, Jesus. Jesus knew that someone at his Thanksgiving table, someone around the Christmas tree, someone at the birthday party, there wanted to have him killed. 
one of those people, one of his dearest friends, was going to hand him over to be betrayed. He didn't know which one, but he knew that person was there. While they were eating, Jesus took a loaf of bread and after blessing it, he broke it, gave it to them and said, take, this is my body. Then he took a cup and after giving thanks, he gave it to them, all of them drank from it. He said to them, this is the blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many. Truly, I tell you, I will never again drink of the fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it new in the kingdom of God. We remember Jesus in the bread, the wine, and the prayer that he taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. When they had sung the hymn and they went out to the Mount of Olives, and Jesus said to them, You will all become deserters, for it is written, I will strike the shepherd, and the sheep will be scattered. But after I am raised up, I will go before you into Galilee. Peter said to him, Even though all become deserters, I will not. Jesus said to him, Truly I tell you, this day, this very night, before the cock crows twice, you will deny me three times. But he said vehemently, even though I must die with you, I will not deny you. And all of them said the same. Then they went to the place called Gethsemane. And he said to his disciples, sit here while I pray. He took with him Peter, James, and John and began to be distressed and agitated. And he said to them, I am deeply grieved, even to death. Remain here. Keep awake. And going a little further, he threw himself on the ground and prayed that if it were possible, the hour might pass from him. He said, Abba, Father, for you all things are possible. Remove this cup from me, yet not what I want, but what you want. He came and found them sleeping. He said to Peter, Simon, are you asleep? Could you not keep awake one hour? Keep awake and pray that you might not come into the time of trial. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. And again he went away and prayed, saying the same words. Once again, there's a lot in this part of the story where you have the disciples being told, you're going to just run, you're going to bolt, you're going to just leave me. And Peter goes, well, they might leave you, but I'm not going to. He goes, Peter, I love you so much. But I'm telling you, tonight before the rooster crows twice, you're going to betray me. You're going to deny me three times. And Peter goes, no, not me. I, I won't do that. And all the other disciples said the same. Even the best fall. And here they are. Jesus is sitting there going, pray with me. And he's there praying. He's like, God, I don't want to die. But your will, not mine. And he comes back to his disciples and finds them asleep. He's like, guys, can't you see how upset I am, how bothered I am, and you can't stay awake with me? What you need to understand is they were in the Passover coma. 
that whole thing when you drink enough wine, eat enough food, you just want to sleep. And that dark garden where Jesus took them to pray was really comfy. It was really easy to fall asleep. But that's all going to change really quickly. And once more he came and found them sleeping, for their eyes were very heavy, and they did not know what to say to him. He came a third time and said to them, Are you still sleeping and taking your rest? Enough! The hour has come. The Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. Get up! Let us get going. See, my betrayer is at hand. Immediately while he was still speaking, Judas, one of the twelve, arrived. And with him there was a crowd with swords and clubs from the chief priests, the scribes, and the elders. Now the betrayer had given them a sign saying, The one I will kiss is the man. Arrest him and lead him away under guard. So when he came, he went up to him at once and said, Rabbi, and kissed him. Then they laid their hands on him and arrested him. But one of those who stood near drew his sword and struck the slave of the high priest, cutting off his ear. Then Jesus said to them, Have you come out with swords and clubs to arrest me as though I were a bandit? Day after day I was with you in the temple teaching, and you didn't arrest me then. But let the scriptures be fulfilled. And all the disciples deserted him and fled. A certain young man was following him, wearing nothing but a linen cloth. They caught hold of him, but he left the linen cloth and ran off naked. Jesus saw this coming, literally. He saw it when he heard from the disciples and from the people who were around saying, hey, Jesus, they want to hurt you. They want, they want to come take you. And he knew it was coming. Hey, Jesus, one of your disciples is going to betray you. But then he literally saw it coming as he looked out over this dark garden and saw a crowd approaching with torches. And my goodness, he knew it was time. And as soon as this chaos erupted, disciples did exactly what he said they were going to do. They ran away. They were scared. and They didn't know what else to do, and they panicked, and they ran away. One even getting the clothes taken off him and just running away naked because he was in such a panic. This is what is going on here. And Jesus looked at the people who showed up. He goes, I was with you every single day. You could have arrested me right there in the middle of the square, in any synagogue, in any temple, but no. You came out to arrest me like a bandit because you know I'm not. They took Jesus to the high priest and all the scribes, and all the chief priests, the elders, and the scribes were assembled, and Peter had followed him at a distance right into the courtyard of the high priest. He was sitting with the guards, warming himself at the fire. Now the chief priest and the whole council were looking for the testimony against Jesus to put him to death, but they found none. For many gave false testimony against him, and their testimony did not agree. Some stood up and gave false testimony against him, saying, We heard him say, I will destroy this temple that is made with hands, and in three days I will build up another not made with hands. But even on this point, their testimony did not agree. Then the high priest stood up before them and asked Jesus, Have you no answer? What is this they testify against you? But he was silent and did not answer them. Again, the chief priest asked him, Are you the Messiah, the blessed son, the, the blessed one? And Jesus said, I am. And you will see the Son of Man seated at the right hand of the power and coming with clouds of, uh, from heaven. Then the high priest tore his clothes and said, Why do we still need witnesses? You have heard his blasphemy. What is your decision? All of them condemned him as deserving death. Some began to spit on him, to blindfold him, and to strike him, saying to him, Prophesy! The guards also took him over and beat him.
They didn't want the truth. They weren't looking for truth. They asked him, hey, Jesus, who, who is this Jesus? Somebody tell me what he did wrong. And they would stand up and someone would say, well, I saw him do this. And another person would stand up and say something just slightly different. You see, in Jewish law, two men had to agree fully on their stories. And if the stories weren't exact, it wasn't the real witness. There was a mistake in there. But as soon as two stories were identical, then yeah, we got them. So one guy came in and said, well, I saw him do this. And then he left. And the other guy came in and said, I saw him do this. But the stories didn't match. You see, they weren't true But the chief priests, the Pharisees, the scribes, the elders, they didn't want the truth. They were afraid of the truth. They wanted nothing to do with the truth. What they wanted was their opinion. Because with their opinions, they got to hold on to their power, their comfort, their privilege. You see, when you embrace the truth, You have to let go of those things, and they weren't willing to. While Peter was below in the courtyard, one of the servant girls of the high priest came by. She saw Peter warming himself. She stared at him and said, You also were with Jesus, the man from Nazareth. But he denied it, saying, I do not know or understand what you're talking about. And then he went out into the forecourt, and the cock crowed. And the servant girl, on seeing him again, began to say to the bystanders, This man is one of them. But again he denied it. And after a little while, the bystanders again said to him, Peter, certainly you are one of them, for you're a Galilean. But he began to curse. And he swore an oath. I do not know this man you are talking about. At that moment, the cock crowed for the second time. And Peter remembered that Jesus had said to him, Before the cock crows twice, you will deny me three times. And Peter broke down and wept. Wept. 